After two close matches, we're tied one and one with the Microsoft A plus team losing its initial lead against Cerner. You hear the music. I won't tease you anymore. The map's gonna be Heavy Rain, my favorite map in all the whole wide world, probably in the history of SC2, to be quite frank, with the exception of Desert Oasis. Down in the bottom right, from Team Microsoft A+, aka the B Team, it's AZ Wraith! And in the top left, trying to live off the win, to feed from the energy of his teammates in the last match, Hopefully bringing it to 2-1 for Cerner, it's Cornhog! Going for the pylon on the low ground. An excellent choice, as bases are always welcome in any good strategy. Also, chats reminded me of the fact that the Oscars are on tonight, and guess what? You just won the award for Best Decision Maker, tuning into the AHGL! I am apparently out of touch with pop culture, but my god, I can describe beautiful shapes in terms of waypoints. Well, the Boxagon is going to note that there's absolutely no pool, no gas, no things going on except one drone that forgot that he didn't belong in the fighting arena. He belongs in a mineral field. He's going to follow that probe around and make sure that he can appropriately scout all the scouting that Cerner Horndog's going to do. Or excuse me, Corndog. Whoops. <laughs> Remember, if you expected serious commentary, you're doing it wrong. The After Hours Gaming League, hosted by Day9TV and sponsored by Red Bull Gaming, is about having fun with competition. Hence, we let the B team rename themselves the Microsoft A Plus team. Because take that, Microsoft A team. Looks like Cornhog Horndog. I'm gonna go ahead and throw down his Nexus at the front. <laughs> Probably gonna get a gateway, but he's gonna get that forge first, because let's be honest, even upon seeing a hatch, those forges provide so much comfort. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if he has a hack and he gets his lings early, I'll be able to kill those off with a forge. Hmm, cannons. How hype. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. I tried to inhale some of my saliva, and my gills couldn't process the liquid. We see AZ Wraith setting up his overlords in very nice positions. A lot of interesting stuff goes on on this map. Down on these bottom left sides, we have many a counterattack that can occur through the mid, through the bottom left, through the top right. All of these disjoint paths means that positioning and scouting are absolutely essential. Gateway, Photon Cannon, and my Clairvoyance is going to kick in and say, I betcha double gas, he's a coming. Damn, I'm good at my job. Now, the real question from AZ Wraith is, what are you going to do? That's actually the only question that you ever really ask in StarCraft, but still, it's one I have for AZ Wraith. Interesting, a four-minute gas geyser. This means that he can potentially be going for a very swift zergling speed, but in other circumstances, roaches can be afoot. We'll likely expect the Zergling speed or some swift layering for the Roach speed counterattack and can't emphasize enough how unbelievably potent and incredible that is. Cornhog being his name does perform a scout. AZ Wraith advances forwards with his Zerglings. Is something sneaky amiss? Well, looks like a Zealot is going to be built for Cornhog. Not necessarily because his wall-off looks like my teeth before I got braces, but also because a Zealot Stalker composition is very strong to apply pressure to a, anything a Zerg player is doing, especially when they delay the expansion. The expansion is most often defended not by Lings, but by Queens, by the units that take no larva. So if there's no third base, it means that the defending Queens will have a harder time getting there, meaning that Zerglings do have to be constructed. But... Corn hog. It's going to take the opportunity to get the sentry up. Corn hog spreading those pylons out all over the place in his main base so he can warp in wherever he needs, however he needs. Another photon cannon going down for defense, but can potentially take pot shots at this overlord. Very interested to find out what AZ Wraith is going to do. He's banked quite a bit of gas. Sometimes fast layer techs do come up from this with four queens. We see the four queens there. We don't see the layer tech quite yet. But a layer straight.
trade into fast spire is becoming increasingly popular on this map. Ignore all of my thoughts. Here's an expansion. What do you know? And the cannon. Oh, doesn't get the overlord. Remember, of all things that hurt, losing an overlord to a photon cannon is up there. The only thing worse is losing an overlord to a turret. We see extractor, extractor, extractor. Spore crawler. Did he scout that? No. Clairvoyance abundant, or perhaps fear abundant for AZ Wraith. Cornhog getting his stargate up. There is a layer. Cornhog is continuing to produce out of this gateway. He's getting three more. Generally, a signal that an expand is to come up. I mean, makes total sense on a map like this. Look at this big, wide, spread out space aru. Very hard to defend with a single cannon in just the right spot. You need brunt teamwork. You need power. You need the gateway. And you also will enjoy an oracle. Mm. An oracle, a very strong unit to run straight into that spore crawler and die with energy. Zergling speed coming up. The layer tech is almost done. We don't see a roach worn. Unlikely to see roaches anymore. But mutalisks are quite good on this map. So much high ground, low ground, high ground action going on that ground units oftentimes struggle to be in just the right spot. Spire. Circumvents all that by using wings. Which PS Red Bull gives you. Once again, the Academy Award for Best Sponsor Plugs goes to Day9. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't have done it without you. Shoutouts to Red Bull for permitting me to use horrific puns in exchange for their wonderful support of the AHGL. Of course, the finals will be headed at Red Bull, Santa Monica, as has been historically the case. Thank you once again. AZ Wraith, moving in. Cornhog is gonna... He's, he's okay, he's okay. They were just shields, they were just shields. They were just shields, he's gonna move in, and he's gonna... They were just shields, they, it was just hull, it was just the hull. It was just the hull, I don't need the hull, we're fine. So what if, so what if, so what if the hull has a little bit of rust on it? It still flies, right? In the meantime, Cornhog starting to mass up Void Rays, getting the gateways to defend the cannon, looking very much like the SOS Zealot with speed, Void Rays with Charge, Archon with awesomeness. Very good combination. Izzy Wraith going for the ever-popular Hydralis Transition. We do see 2k, 1k in the bank, exactly how this sort of style is supposed to work. Gather up a whole bunch of funds, get your 1-1 upgrades going on. That looks like Muscular Augments is going to be the first, and then hold that H key and be dazed and amazed at the number of Hydralisks that are at your fingertips. But Izzy Wraith has yet to do that. He's going to do a Jadong style, save up all the money, all in one step, burn all the money. No, there's nine Hydralisks coming on up. Soon enough, those Hydralisks are getting a buff. So get your strats together. Wait a minute. It's a lot of gateways. There's the charge. Oh my god, I love Zealot Archon. Suddenly, I'm going to become biased. What Cornhog is doing is awesome. And AZ Wraith has no hope. But let's see if he actually does. Using the powers of analysis and looking. Oh my god, power overwhelming Archons. We see an infestation pit going down. Could be the key to get the hive up for the Viper, which will allow yoinking of, I don't know. Not going to necessarily be the tool that he needs in this position, but oh, oh that's Ventral Sacks. That's not the Pathogen Glands. Infestors smacking things down with that fungal growth. An unusual combination. Hydra Infester, you might say. But think about it. I reply, it's an extremely brutal combo against this mix. The Zealots are in fact the big damage dealer of this force. Keeping them alive and well and at the front lines hurting is the key. This Hydralisk force is continuing to grow. The drone count swelling up. It's going to be at 81 in a moment. Lings and Hydras together battle against their once mortal enemy, the Rock. Oracle still hiding in the back. Yeah. Waiting for an expansion to finish up. Yeah. I know that laugh is from something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. <gasps> swarm host. The swarm host. How foolish I have been. Swarm host for AZ Wraith. An absolutely death defying unit. It makes free units. We see this zealot. Archon. Void Ray. Gateway army. How many gateways does he have? 10? He's going up to 12. Grr. That is so very, very many. 
But soon enough, the swarm host count is going to grow. This army is very good against swarm hosts in small numbers. The damage output of this is so ridiculously huge that it can rip down those locusts in a matter of seconds, but once the swarm host count gets too damn high, it's doom. Is he wraith? Is he wraith? Is he going to be able to hold this off? It looks like zealots streaming in. Zealots, not yet streaming in. Zealots, pulling back. Zealots, streaming, pulling back, streaming in. Joining together. Get streaming into the third... Retreating. It looks like there's been enough opportunity for AZ Wraith to get up all his swarm hosts in mid. The Zealot Archon army goes, Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed not to be a Colossus right now. AZ Wraith has his fourth base up. That Oracle still planted precariously at the back. We see that currently the... Wait, the Robo Count is at zero. He does not have a robo! He can't even detect! Except for this guy, who has some serious hull damage. Oh god, oh no, where on earth will he go? Ah oh, yes, a robo facility, I found it. He's gonna get it out, a lot of zealots coming up. Storm is available! The stream of locusts begins. We're seeing a couple zealots commencing a counterattack down on the bottom side, but... Too many spines are present. Cornhog has another counterattack pylon and 12 gateways powering up. Who needs Colossus when you can go straight for Tempest and are made of balls? That is the thought of Cornhog. Here it comes. Will he take the engagement directly? The Zealots, uh-oh, getting disorganized. Get ripped up, get taken down. Uh-oh, uh-oh. More fall, more fall. And the unit's lost tab. It's mostly Protoss. Stormu. He's got to engage. He's got to take these out now. They're not burrowed. They're not burrowed. They're not burrowed. Who do you think is going to win, Cerner or Microsoft, in this particular match? We see the Swarm Host burrow. Get on there. Get on there. Get on top of him. Get on top of him, Storm. Storm. He's pulling back. The Templar! They just died! Everything going the opposite direction of good for Cerner's Cornhog, the Microsoft A-plus team. Looking to be an opportune shape to take this next game. Things were looking very dicey for AZ Wraith, but then he just built Swarm Host, and that literally fixed every single problem he had in the entire game. The rocks that were once knocked down to protect have been re-knocked down to provide another attack path. Storming down mid. Pulling back to this backside. Oh, if these go the wrong way. Oh, at the last second, at the 11th hour. Sends them out in just the right formation angle. <gasps> The Archons. The Archons. There's only one left. He's trying to run around, but the Locusts are showing up as well. There's time warps. The Hydras are slow, but it doesn't matter. The Zealot line. The Zealots are literally getting unlived. They are going to be turned into Dragoons and sent to StarCraft 1. More Zealots being warped in to try to counterattack, but I mean, the Ironclad defense of AZ Wraith. No, no, these are, these are retreat Zealots. Oh god, 20 Hydras being produced. I love it. Easy Wraith not going to rely on just the Swarm Host. He's going to be pulling into a very aggressive formation. Actually, didn't really make that many Swarm Hosts this game. Only 12, but he has 6.5k, 2k in the bank. Here come four Locusts and 20 Hydras. Oh my gosh. The Zealot Archon Voidrate Army, my most favorite composition in all the whole wide world, is getting absolutely wrecked by the incredible pushing the fearsome swarm host mixtures. We see some Tempest coming up, but look at this. No more swarm host being produced for our Zerg player. It's only Hydras. With a Hydralist count this high, what are you to do but cry? Right now there's 26 plus 9. My god, no one even knows how many Hydralists that is, but I can guarantee it's over 30. Still trying to find a good angle to swing around, and I think he may have found uh, the Hydralist managed to get there in time. We're seeing, oh my god, these poor Archons. These poor Archons. They're so far away. They're so far away. They're nowhere near, but we do have Tempest coming out. There's one Tempest ready to... <gasps> Hydra drops? Oh my god, my eyes are quite dry. Can you pass the Hydra drops? Oh my god. An unbelievable, unusual play. We've never seen Ventral Sacks used literally ever. Literally. And now we're seeing Hydra drops being applied directly to the eyeball of Cornhog, and moisture is not something he's in the mood for. Hydra's getting picked off one at a time by those Tempests, but 
So are the bases. The bases are being picked off one at a time. That is the opposite of beneficial. We see Tempest, Zealot, Archon. Is soon going to be Tempest, Archon. The Zealot count is down to just a pair. And with a pair of Archons, a pair of Zealots, there's no way he is prepared for this. They pay me the big bucks, guys. The Hydralisk army overwhelms the Tempest. It shoots them down. The slowed locusts say, well, I don't care if I'm slowed down. I'm only going to be alive for 10 more seconds. They continue to tear through. And AZ Wraith with adrenaline flowing through his body. He can't even type GG properly without fat fingering half of the keyboard. But that's okay. I'm allowed to poke fun at him because he won the game. AZ Wraith from the team A plus Microsoft. And by that, I mean Microsoft A plus Brings the series to 2-1. to one. They could win it with this upcoming match. Or, or, Team Cerner could force things to the ace match. What will happen? We don't know. We can only predict the possibilities using imagination. When we return, things will come possibly to a close or possibly extend. Either way, my excitement never stops. This is the After Hours Gaming League by Day9TV and Red Bull Gaming. Stay tuned.